When we're talking about the web, we need to have a quick conversation about data storage. There are many different ways to store data. Three are shown here. Those are the most common ones. You can have a file system. This is something we explored in previous videos. If you're on a Windows machine, you might be familiar with this string here, C colon backslash folder, 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 and then uh, eventually you end up in a file. In Unix, you start out with a forward slash and then your folder structure and subfolders and the last forward slash that takes you to a file. The files can be photos or some documents, videos. Another way to store data is in a database in some kind of structured storage where instead of using a path specification to get to the data, you would write a database request. Uh, this is here, we are just saying that we are selecting everything from some table. So we get all the entries from a table, then we may insert that into some other table, or we may insert something into a table. Often that requires some system administrator to ensure that things scale properly, that the integrity is maintained, performance stays up. In the simplest sense, you can think of some files as first order database. These are tables, CSV file, column separated value file might be understood as a database. We have talked about pandas before, uh, which reads these tables and then if you are familiar with databases, you can look at pandas as a language that brings database theory and database requests into these uh, table file formats. So generally you look at uh, subsets of some records of interest uh, and oftentimes the, the parameter part of a URL uh, might suggest a key uh, that is perhaps a column in the database uh, that is set to some minimum and some maximum value to get out the range of rows for some date range. Lastly, there's object storage. This is how cloud storage works. Uh, if you look at Google Drive, you oftentimes find these fairly uh, cryptic file names with uh, some object hierarchy in there. They somewhat emulate uh, the file system structure that we are familiar with, uh, but internally, uh, this hierarchical system to store data doesn't exist. It appears as a file, but it really is a big blob of data that can be efficiently queried that allows us to dynamically share subsets of uh, data much more easily than in a traditional file system. Here we have a very short list of some public data archives that are worth looking into. There is a a seismic and infrasound archive that is hosted by EarthScope, which was formerly IRIS. Another archive is geodetic data that is now also hosted by EarthScope uh, that was formerly UNAFCO. You can find that under data.unafco.org. Uh, you will have to register for a free user account and then you have access to all of those data. Synthetic aperture radar data is hosted by the Alaska Satellite Facility, for instance. Uh, you can search that at search.asf.alaska.edu. USGS has, for instance, water data, and NASA's global sulfur monitoring is hidden behind this URL. Some of these uh, allow for automated downloads, others don't. Uh, for some, like the UNAFCO portion here, uh, you may have to read some documentation on how you can work with the login and enabling automated downloads, but it's possible. And for others, you can just explore how they're putting together search queries that you might then be able to exploit to get uh, to the data that you're interested in. So once you know what kind of data you want and where you want to get it from, uh, you need to decide how you want to access it. If it is a one-off download, you can just do it manually, right? You can go to the URL, you can do your search, you can wait until the results pop up, you download whatever format they're giving you and you're done. But if you're suspecting, or if you are doing this for the 10th time, it's probably worth investing some time into a script. You would give it the parameters that you're interested in, for instance, a latitude, longitude, boundary that you would like to download the data for, or some time boundary, 
from when to when you want to download data, uh, station name, all depends on what data you're looking for and how they're organized. You will have to go and look, explore the archive and its structure a little bit. Is it file-based where you have a long URL and then there's some file name dot tar.gz? This would be file-based and then you can download it. Is it a web service that puts together a long URL with key value pairs or parameters at the end? Uh, then you need to put your script together a little bit differently. Uh, you should check whether the archive provides documentation on how to script uh, data download. There's an example here for the UNAFCO archive that I mentioned earlier. Next step is experimenting with various methods of downloading and unpacking. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And eventually you want to generalize your specific use case to enable quick downloads in the future. So for instance, make sure that you provide correct command line arguments for your script, latitude and longitude boundaries or the time intervals, the station name, so that you have one script that can very quickly get the data for you, even for many stations. So you could iterate over a list of stations. 